So I decided to build a test bench recently so that I could test products that I'm getting for YouTube and I don't have to tear apart my computer and potentially cause any kind of problems that would hinder me from then being able to like edit and render the videos for YouTube. And so I thought that building a test bench would be the best way to move forward. And as such, I was looking for some reliable and expensive storage where I could just house a ton of data. Now, Fixero was kind enough to send over their P500 SATA 3 SSD for me to test out. And we're gonna do a quick unboxing of the product. And then we're gonna hop into all the testing that I did on my new test bench with this SSD and then talk about whether or not it would be a good solution for you. Here's what the packaging looks like, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over so you can look at the specifications of the drive. Feel free to pause this if you'd like. And then once we go ahead and we get this opened up, you will see that we get a Phillips screwdriver, a bag of mounting screws, as well as a user manual or user guide and then the drive itself. Now, taking a closer look at the drive, you will see that it does have four mounting points on the back of the drive, as well as on each side of the drive. The case is made out of plastic, and I don't think that's a big deal personally. Sometimes you will see them in a metal case, but I think plastic is perfectly fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this hooked up, and we're gonna jump straight into the testing, starting off with Windows 11. Now when you first get this hooked up and you go to the file manager and you click on this PC, you're not going to see the drive there and you might be thinking, what the heck, I got a bad drive. But you actually, we need to go in and we need to make sure that it's properly partitioned and formatted so that Windows can recognize the drive. So you do that by right clicking on the start menu logo and going to disk management. And then from there, we're going to right click where it shows disk zero in my case. In your case, it might be different if you have more than one hard drive. and where it says unallocated space, that is the actual drive. So we're just gonna right click and click new simple volume. And then we're just gonna walk through all of these prompts. I'm not gonna change anything until we get to the very last screen. If you wanna change the drive letter here, you can go ahead and do that, but I don't personally care about what letter it is. So I'm just gonna click next. I'm leaving the file system as NTFS because that's what Windows uses natively. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rename it where it says volume label, just so as we do our testing, you'll be able to see that this is indeed the exact same drive and then we haven't changed anything and so we can do all of our testing and it'll just make it easy keeping the name of the drive exactly what it is. So after we get this renamed I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click next here at the bottom and then from there it's going to go ahead and do all of the partitioning and formatting for us we can go back into our actual file manager, and from there, you should be able to see that the drive has now populated under this PC, under whatever drive letter you gave it. Now that we got everything set up, I wanna do a test. So I have a test folder that's about 105 gigabytes worth of data, and I'll show you that here. And then I'm basically just gonna drag and drop that on the drive so that we can test the write speed. And then from there, we'll remove the folder from my computer, and we'll drag it back to my desktop so that we can test the read speed. And then I'm just gonna speed this up for you and we'll talk about it at the end and compare the results. Now that that's complete, here are our results. So we had a read speed of three minutes and 23 seconds and a write speed of four minutes and 40 seconds. And that is the real time results for a 105 gigabyte folder transfer in Windows 11 with the Fixero P500. Now we're gonna switch gears and I wanna go ahead and jump into just some disk speed tests. So we're gonna start with Black Magic disk speed test and then we'll hop into Crystal Disk Mark. 
And the same thing applies here. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and then we'll talk about the results here at the end. So you see we did yield better results with Crystal Dismark over Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. However, uh, the drive is only rated at 500 megabytes per second for the read speed, and it surpassed that in both tests. So I'd say so far it's performing really well. Okay, so the drive works in Windows. Great. But what if you wanted to use it on a different operating system? Well, we're going to test this out in both Linux and Mac OS, and we're going to see if the drive is detected and how well it performs under similar testing conditions if used on a different operating system. So let's check it out. Okay, so we've switched over to Lia Linux. This is an Arch-based distribution. I use Arch, by the way. And we're going to do the exact same tests. So we're just going to do the same file transfer test to the drive and then back to the computer. And then we're going to talk about the results at the end. The results are in and we got a read speed of 3 minutes and 18 seconds and a write speed of 4 minutes and 14 seconds using Lia Linux, which again is an Arch-based distribution with that 105 gigabyte folder transfer. Now if we compare that to Windows, you will see that it is slightly faster for both read and write speeds when transferring this same folder. Now Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and Crystal Disk Mark are not available on Linux, so we are gonna use KDisk Mark and I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same setup that we used for Crystal Disk Mark and then we'll speed this up and talk about the results at the end. It looks like Linux was slightly faster on our read speeds and then just slightly slower on our write speeds when compared to Windows 11 using Crystal Disk Mark. But overall, these are not bad scores. Again, I like to reiterate that the drive is only rated for a read speed of 500 megabytes per second, and it is clearly exceeding that. Now some of you might be wondering what it would be like if you tried to play games off of this drive. Is it going to be too slow? So I loaded up Steam and I installed a couple of games. Most of them are free games, but I just wanted to show you the actual load time for the game. So none of this is sped up. This is exactly how long it took to load the game. And then I'll show you a couple of seconds of actual gameplay and you can see whether or not it worked well and if this is something that would work for you in this situation. Now I would also like to say that I'm not a gamer. I don't have a gaming setup. I'm using a Logitech MX keys mouse and keyboard. And so please just bear with me in terms of the actual gameplay.
I would need a really old Mac to use this as an internal drive, so I put this in an external enclosure and I've connected it to my M4 Mac Mini and you'll see that the drive did populate here on the right hand side. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna open this up and you can see here are the Steam games that I have installed on the drive. It is still formatted in NTFS format, but we're gonna go ahead and try and do a speed test and see what happens. And you'll see here that it doesn't work because the drive is considered read only. And that is because it is an NTFS format. So I went ahead and I installed Tuxera, which is this program here, and that allows the Mac to read this format. And so we're gonna go back and we're gonna try and do another speed test. Now, please note that because it is in an external enclosure hooked up with a USB cord, it is going to be slower in terms of read and write speeds, but I just wanted to show you that it did work. So for me personally, I've been using this drive solely in my test bench just to house all kinds of data. Now as a content creator, I have mass amounts of data and files that I use to make all of these videos and it takes up mass amounts of space. And so for me, this drive works perfect. I haven't had any issues reading or writing to the drive over the last few weeks. I've been throwing all different kinds of stuff at it in various sizes. I haven't had any slowdowns or the drive overheating or anything like that. And it's been working flawlessly. Now, depending on your use case, this may or may not work out for you. If you are interested in purchasing something like this, I'm gonna put a link down in the video description for you to go ahead and check that out. If I may have missed something in the video that you'd like to know, hit me up down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But that's about all I have for this video. So if you did like it, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to my channel while you're at it if you haven't already. It really helps me out and it helps push these videos out to a broader audience. But that's about all I have. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.